Hey, David Aiken with Checkerhead Brewing and another tips and tricks for home brewers around the world. Today at Checkerhead Brewing, it is bottling day and I've got all these Grolsch bottles in my dishwasher ready to go. They've already been cleaned, but now what I'm gonna do is run them through a sanitation cycle so that they're all sanitized with heat and that way no other infections can get into the beer once the beer is transferred into those bottles for bottle conditioning. I'm gonna run the cycle right now and then we're gonna go over to where I'm gonna do the bottling and I'm gonna show you the next step. So one of the things I like to do while the bottles are sanitizing is take a gravity reading. Use the hydrometer and take a final gravity reading of the beer before it goes into the bottles just to check the attenuation of the yeast and to sort of get a sense of what the alcohol by volume is. So I have two of these flasks that go along with the hydrometer and I use a funnel and a coffee filter and I'll put the funnel and coffee filter on one, I'll fill up the other and then I'll dump the liquid into and through the coffee filter so that any impurities are taken out of the beer and you get a really accurate hydrometer reading. Now, I'll take a, a closer look at that hydrometer just now so you can see what the reading is. Started off at 1.043, I believe it was. Yeah, so I've got a, a fermentation chart here and I keep notes of how the fermentation is going. I also make a note of what the attenuation of that yeast should be so that when I take this reading, I get a sense of whether, when I think it's finished, the yeast has actually hit the marks that the manufacturer suggests. So let's take a look at what that hydrometer reading says and get a sense of what the ABVs are and what the attenuation for that yeast has been. So as we look at the hydrometer here, a little bit tricky to see, but I'm reading that as about 1.004. So that would come down to the fermentation chart I've got. It started off at 1.043, ended at 1.004. And if you use your math from something like Beersmith or any of the uh, software packages that come for brewing, I ended up with 5.1% ABV and 74% uh, attenuation, which for this particular yeast, which is uh, Imperial Stefan, uh, with an attenuation range between 73 and 77, 74 is close enough to being sort of in the middle of that, that I'm happy with how this all worked out. So the hydrometer reading is done. Next step is gonna to be to transfer the beer from the fermenter into a bottling bucket, check our volume, and then figure out how much priming sugar we need to get the volumes of CO2 that we're after, and then to put it into bottles. Sanitation is incredibly important. We uh, put the bottles into the dishwasher to do a sanitizing cycle, and here in the bottling area, we're gonna sanitize everything that's touching the beer after it leaves the fermenter as well. Now, I've got a brew kettle here that I use as my bottling bucket because it's got a sight glass on the side so I can see how much liquid is in it, which helps me figure out how much priming sugar to put in it. Now, I've got star sand here that's gone into the water liquid here, so it's a diluted solution. That sanitizer is gonna sanitize not only the bottling bucket, but also the auto siphon that I'm gonna use, a bottling wand, and the hose that I'm gonna to use to transfer. Now I'll make this happen. Uh, I'll show you how it works actually. We're gonna attach the hose to the uh, auto siphon. Bring this up to the bucket. I'll just take the wand and put it into the bucket, and then you lift and push down to get the water flowing. Now, the reason we have it at a different height is that the siphon only works when there's a height differential. So right now, you'll see we've got liquid coming out of the hose, and I'm gonna swoosh all the way around the bucket and make sure all surfaces have been coated with this sanitizer, including the sight glass and the spigot. Make sure it's got a good coating so that all the stuff that's touching beer has been sanitized and then we'll transfer it into the bucket. Now once the bucket's been sanitized, I also, so there's still liquid in here, I just turn it over on top so that the sanitizer can bring back into the bucket where it came from and let it sit for a little while so you don't get a whole lot of that sanitizer into the beer that you're gonna be bottling. You want it to be as sanitized as possible, but you don't want a lot of that water with star sand still residing in that pot when you do the transfer of the beer into the bottling bucket. Now the airlock on the top has to come off because if it's not taken off, it's gonna to try to suck the liquid that's in the airlock into the bucket as it's being drained. And then we're gonna come down, we're gonna turn on the spigot. 
and into the bottling bucket it goes. Notice how it's a nice smooth and not very many bubbles happening. You want as little oxygen getting into that beer as possible as it's going into the bottling bucket. So the beer has been transferred into the bottling bucket and it's just a tiny little bit above the sight glass here, which means it's about eight and a half gallons or 32 and a half liters worth of beer. Now I'm gonna calculate how much priming sugar I want. It's a raspberry heft that I'm bottling today, so I wanna put in about 2.7 volumes of CO2. There's gonna be a mini carbonation happening in each of the bottles, so bottle conditioning those beers, and you need to put the priming sugar in to give the yeast that's still in suspension in the beer the sugar it needs to carbonate and provide that CO2 in the bottle itself. So here I am on the Brewer's Friend website. It's got a fantastic beer priming calculator for calculating the amount of priming sugar you need to add to get the CO2s that you're after, the, the carbonation that you're after. So I've typed in right here, you can see I've got 32.5 liters. I'm aiming for 2.7 volumes of CO2 and the ambient temperature that the beer is gonna be sitting at is about 20 degrees. And if you scroll down on that page, it shows that we need to have 2.626 grams of corn sugar or dextrose to achieve the carbonation in the bottle itself. So I'm gonna measure that out now and I'll probably just round it down to 260 grams and then uh, dissolve that into hot water and then add that to the bucket as well and then we'll get started with the bottling. So we've got 260 and a tiny little bit, 0.2 grams of dextrose on that measuring cup. We're gonna go over to our boiling water, add the boiling water so that it's disinfected and dissolve that sugar. And then we're gonna put it into the bottling bucket. So get this, I have a fantastic Japanese hot water pot that keeps water at boiling temperature. And I poured a bunch of that boiling water into that measuring cup with the dextrose. I'm gonna give it a stir now. We're gonna get it all dissolved and then we're gonna add it to the bottling bucket. So let's put it in. That uh, is the priming sugar dissolved into that water, pouring it into the beer itself. And that sugar will give the yeast that's in, still in suspension because it's an unfiltered beer, just a little hit of food that will then generate a tiny little fermentation in the bottle itself, which will create the CO2 we're after. I'm using the uh, the racking wand here just to help stir that in a little bit. Try not to create any bubbles or oxygen. You want to keep as oxygen out of that beer. Keep it out as much as possible, but still make sure that that sugar water gets dissolved and evenly distributed throughout the beer. All right, we're ready to go. Now this is the bottling wand. It's attached to the hose, which is going all the way up to the, the auto siphon at the top in the bucket there. And this is the point I want to show you. Check this out. There's a little valve right at the tip there. As you push that in, when you push it to the bottom of the bottle, it opens it up and allows liquid to flow. And as you pull it out of the bottle, it closes so that the liquid stops. So this is a fantastic way for filling up each bottle individually. You just push it down, push that all the way to the bottom of the bottle so it opens the flow of liquid. It fills from the bottom up so you don't get any bubbles because it's, you know, it's submerged for most of the time. And uh, one at a time, those bottles get filled. The sugar that's in it will ferment in the bottle, bottle conditioning, and give you the CO2 that you're after for carbonation. So I'm gonna fill each of these bottles now up to the top, cap them, and then put them aside for about two weeks. In two weeks, the sugar that we put in will ferment inside the bottle, bottle conditioning, creating the CO2 and the carbonation that we're after for a great beer experience. I'm David Aiken for Checkerhead Brewing. Thanks for watching. I hope this video was helpful. And if you have any comments or if you have any questions, just pop them in the, uh, the comment section below and I'll be happy to answer them for you. And please hit the subscribe button because my ambition is to grow this channel to the point where I can expand my brewery and open an actual commercial operation. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a great brew day no matter where you are. And we'll see you next time.